Welcome back and apologies for the short technical delay there. Um, we're now going to move on swiftly to the next presenter, who's uh, Vibhu Vivek, who's the Senior Vice President of Products uh, at Cambium. Um, and we're going to be talking about the really hot topic of where Wi-Fi 6 and 5G fit together. Um, and uh, if we'd like to play that video, we'll come back for Q&A uh, after the session with Vibhu. Thank you. Thank you for joining. 5G will replace Wi-Fi 6. This is not enough new phenomena. Every time a new 3GPP standard is, is released, we talked about that replacing Wi-Fi. But this time, it has got special attention. And there are primarily two reasons. Number one, because of COVID, connectivity has got special attention and, and people are talking about such topics more. But there is another more important reason. If you look at Wi-Fi 6 and 5G, both have evolved and become more efficient. And they have done it by using the latest technologies and sometimes picking technologies from each other. So in turn, they have become very, very similar. The file layer has become very similar. So why shouldn't one replace the other? That's a very natural question. Look, your arm muscles and your leg muscles are made of very similar tissues. But, those, but both these muscles serve very different purpose. They're designed to do different things. And it's very similar in Wi-Fi 6 and 5G. So what we will do today is go through each of these standards, contrast them, compare them, and see what they are best suited for. So let's get into it. Which is better? We will compare them across various performance parameters and see how, do, how are they different. So number one, is capacity. This is probably the most talked about uh, characteristic. Look, we, both 5G and Wi-Fi 6 now support 1024 QAM, MU MIMO, OFDMA. And so the modem is very similar. So why shouldn't, why shouldn't their speed be similar? The real difference lies in the frequency they operate on. Wi-Fi 6 operates on 5 to 7 gigahertz. 5G operates on mid, low, and high bands, going up to actually millimeter wave. In millimeter wave, you have lots of spectrum. That's why you can have bigger channels, much wider channels. In Wi-Fi, the channel size is limited to 80 megahertz. In 5G, uh, you can have gigahertz channels. So that's why the capacity will be more when you're using millimeter wave. There is another reason why millimeter wave gives better performance. And that is MU MIMO. The higher the MU MIMO order, the larger the capacity. And for to achieve higher order MU MIMO, you need to form lots of narrow beam, which means you need an antenna which has a lot of patches, big array of antenna. In millimeter wave, the wavelength is smaller. So the patches are becoming smaller. They can be much densely packed. So you can, in a small space, you can form a very large array of antenna. Whereas in 5G, your 5 to 7 gigahertz spectrum, your, your wavelengths are longer, you know, in several uh, centimeters. So the patches become bigger. They cannot be packed together as closely. So the antennas become larger. So beyond 8 by 8 is, is not practical in most cases. Whereas in 5G with millimeter wave, you can go to 32 by 32, 64 by 64, or even larger. And that's why you can have a higher order MU MIMO and, and get more capacity. So look, 5G can deliver more capacity than Wi-Fi, 
but only when they are when they are using millimeter wave when they are in in lower frequency they are similar to wi-fi next is density the if you look at standard they talk both these standards use different verbiage to describe density while wi-fi 6 will talk about thousand users per ap thousands of users per ap right 5g talks about so many million devices per square kilometer right so because the purpose is very different you know wi-fi density is optimized so that in a conference room in a stadium in a uh, in, a, in an arena you can put in where the density is larger you know people are next to each other how many people you can serve through one ap whereas 5g is more wan technology for wider area networks serving uh, uh, you know many sensors on many phones in that network that's what it's designed for so it's different latency <coughs> Latency had always been an issue with 3GPP, right? Whereas 5G with, with Wi-Fi, you could get a uh, few millisecond latency, even even in 11 uh, AC time frame, right? 5G has made a big leap. With 5G, particularly with URLLC, you can get sub millisecond latency. So for normal applications you know video voice ar vr both these standards can serve no issues but when it comes to uh, automation control very highly reliable uh, systems 5g is the way to go one they are working in, uh, in 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 license frequency that's why they're reliable extra protection for reliability there and as well as they can get to some milliseconds so when a when a very highly uh, sensitive system, you know, electric grid or con automation control is needed. It is, it is, 5G URLC is the better way to go. Range. Wi-Fi is a short distance protocol. Right. You are talking about 100 meter, 200 meter, maybe 300 meters, but it is still for local area. Whereas 5G can go for miles, it's a wider area. Of, of course, the distance of 5G depends on the frequency you're operating on. With millimeter wave, the distance is smaller, but it is still a, a long distance protocol. Virtualization, this has become very interesting. Some form of virtualization through Passpoint has been there in Wi-Fi 6 for several years now. And what Passpoint allows that from one Wi-Fi access point, you can run multiple SSIDs belonging to different businesses, get all these businesses getting authenticated through different authentication system. In 5G, network slicing has taken it further. You cannot only run different uh, businesses, different authentication systems, but these different businesses can run very different type of data. One could be mission critical IOT type of system. The other could be, you know, voice, voice. The third could be video or normal data services. So, and each of them, the network is sliced so that each of them work uh, very efficiently. And that's something new in 5G. And that, that has brought in a, a, you know, private 5G networks in forefront because from a service provider from one infrastructure can serve different type of businesses who have different types of needs. Lastly, battery life. Wi-Fi 6 battery life is optimized for phones. Your phones can run from hours to days to weeks, right? You can, or your laptops can run for weeks. Whereas 5G has some special things with MMTC. They target 10 year of battery life where these for sensors where these sensors are in a wide area and and these sensors are running over battery and and still can run over 10 of e tens of year and so the optimization is very different and serving very different needs one is more for iot another one is more for
smartphones and laptops and those kind of devices. But if you look at it, the 5G seems to be very well suited for fixed wireless broadband. We have ever increasing need for speed, right? And, and Wi-Fi has caught up with it over time. Even during 11N or 11AC, you know, the needs of LAN was pretty much served by the Wi-Fi. But there was no standard fixed wireless broadband which could match that speed. Right? There were pr uh, proprietary uh, solutions existing, uh, but no standard. 5G has filled that gap. And let's see how. One, 5G can run on licensed, semi-licensed, or unlicensed spectrum. So depending on the reliability which you need in that network, you can run on unlicensed, licensed, or, or semi-licensed uh, spectrum. Secondly, we talked about capacity. Because of millimeter wave, because of high data rate, because of higher order MU MIMO, you can got the, get a lot of capacity serving multi many of Wi-Fi access point or many of the LANs through, uh, through 5G. And lastly, the network slicing which we talked about is ability to slice the network so that you can run different types of services in IoT, ser mission critical IoT service or a video surveillance service or a normal data service uh, out of the same infrastructure, whereby a, 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 a service provider can use his infrastructure to and, and sell services to different type of businesses needing different type of, having different type of needs. And lastly, you know 5G costs are higher, but eventually it will come down so that your CP's e devices will come, costs will come down as well. And, uh, and, and you know that is needed for your fixed wireless broadband. So altogether, it kind of covers all the gaps uh, which is needed uh, for, uh, for a uh, efficient uh, wireless, fixed wireless broadband. How about indoor? You know, question could be asked that if 5G is so efficient for uh, and, and has large capacity with millimeter wave, why can't the servers and the phones and the laptops inside the building directly connect to a public 5G? And here's the reason why. Millimeter wave has poor penetration. So, from a tower or electric pole, when you're radiating millimeter wave, it does not go inside the building. When it reaches, the signal strength is very low or not existent, and that's why you will not get that high capacity when you are inside the building and using millimeter wave. Second, then you can ask the question, why can't uh, the service provider deploy or the telcos deploy the the Wi-Fi uh, small cells inside the building. Look, this is can be done, but it's a challenging thing. Even in electricity, right, your public buildings, the electric circuit is owned by, by the building owner and not the electric company. Because difficult to maintain, deploy, difficult to deploy, and same applies here. Another way could be that you can have the private enterprises inside the building can deploy their own net 5G small cells. It's possible. There is a lot of infrastructure in 5G standards to, to, to facilitate that. But 5G has been made for a, a carrier who, and it is complex. It's a complex architecture for a private entity to, to go and manage it, maintain it. Secondly, it becomes expensive because uh, the, the private enterprises will have to go and buy these licensed spectrum. Third, when you come from your cell phone and join inside your 5G network and when you come outside the building, you have to roam to a public Wi-Fi, uh, public 5G. So that roaming agreement needs to be made. Again, there are facilities to do that, but it all brings a lot more complexity. So it becomes challenging. And lastly, Wi-Fi is there inside the building, right? It is serving all the purpose beautifully. You have 
most of your two uh, gears on Wi-Fi, your laptop, your television, your refrigerator, everything is there on Wi-Fi. Why change it if it is working so nicely? So 5G uh, getting indoor for high capacity will remain a challenge. It will not replace the LAN. How about Internet of Things? Again, uh, fi 5G is complex, Wi-Fi is easy. So the IoT networks will be easier to manage in Wi-Fi than in 5G. But when it comes to mission critical needs, uh, which, which requires extreme low latency, which requires extreme reliability, 5G is the better way to go because of their MMTC and URLLC protocols. It's the better way to go. Coverage, again, you know, inside the building, you know, HVAC systems and other things could run on Wi-Fi. But when you are talking about wide area networks, low power sensors, uh, you know, 5G has the two, has the ability to handle those kind of distances. Cost. Uh, Today, uh, Wi-Fi is much more cheaper than 5G and the cost difference will come down. But still 5G will remain more expensive because it's working on licensed spectrum and one has to buy this spectrum. And lastly, the battery life. Uh, uh, you know, for sensors, for LP WAN, 5G has done a lot of optimizations and carried forward the work done in, in uh, NB-IoT and you are talking about 10 years of battery life. So whereas for high capacity, high throughput type of devices is what uh, Wi-Fi 6 has been optimized for. So, so, you know, when you're talking about sensors, tens of years of life, 5G is the better way to go. So let's look at the applications. Let's start with the indoor and outdoor extension and we'll go one by one. For residential, you, you will continue to use your home routers, Wi-Fi routers. There is no need to change. Uh, it is solves all the need. Why change it? It is not expensive. You're not, you know, all the LAN uses, connection between your phone to your TV to your server at home. Those are free. Why will you change it? But yes your fixed wireless broadband, now you have an option to run your fixed wireless broadband through 5G. Retail and campus, which both have indoor and outdoor applications, again, for both indoor and outdoor, Wi-Fi will serve the need. You know, 100, 200 meters, high density, classrooms, you know, Wi-Fi is made for that and serves that need. It is low cost, you will not change that. When, when applicable, 5G will work as your backhaul. Next, uh, carpet and enterprise. Carpeted enterprise, again, the LAN will remain on Wi-Fi 6. There is enough security built into Wi-Fi 6 for them to be feeling secure about it. Uh, there is, uh, you have so many devices out there, it is less expensive, so there's no need to change. For remote worker, when they are at home, they will use 5G, sorry, Wi-Fi. But when they go remote at third locations, you know, 5G could, could be a, a choice. So LAN environment, I think, will remain pretty much Wi-Fi. But it's a different ma matter when it comes to WAN, wide area, industrial, mobile, mission critical applications, sensors, it will be 5G. You know, when you are when you're talking about trucks moving and, and providing feeds about how the perishable items are there inside the truck, it's the 5G. When you're talking about sensors in a city, oh, uh, city, it's, it's working over LP van, it is, it, is, it is 5G. Or when it's fixed wireless broadband, it's 5G. So in summary, Wi-Fi will remain a LAN technology. Wi-Fi and as well as LAN extensions to outdoor campus environments, whereas 5G will uh, be a good fixed wireless broadband technology. It will be a WAN technology. It will bring and actually usher uh, 
mission critical internet of things uh, very rapidly and uh, and 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 the lp vans very rapidly we have ever increasing need of speed wi-fi 6 has served that needs and wi-fi has served this needs over the years very well there is always a gap there is no standard which for fixed wireless broadband that was a gap 5g fulfills that gap beautifully so i think wi-fi 6 and 5g will be in living happy union thank you Thank you very much for that, uh, Vibhu, and uh, um, welcome back to the Q and A sessions. If I could ask uh, people on the on the uh, attendee attendees to uh, well, two things. First off, you'll see there's a Q and A box underneath the video window, but also um, you'll see coming up on their screen your screen in a moment um, a poll question. Um, and uh, that'll look at uh, the different features in access networks and what you perceive to be the most important. So if I can ask the poll to be pushed out and while we're waiting for the responses to come in, I'll, I'll start on the, the Q and A. Um, Vivu, I, mean, I, I completely agree with, with your view that the LAN will remain Wi-Fi and in some cases wired. Yeah, certainly particularly carpeted offices inside the home. Um, yeah, and, and 5G has a role, obviously anything you know, macro area and, and mobile. What about things like enterprise campuses where you have maybe moving objects? It could be, I don't know, trucks in a mine or, or um, I don't know, robots or something like that. I mean, where, where do you see the boundaries changing over time? Yeah, so it depends, depends. I think, uh, you know, school if you look at campuses, school campus, college campuses, uh, I still feel uh, primarily Wi-Fi will be the uh, main media. And the reason is, again, low cost. Uh, the reason is low cost primarily, and that's why it will be. Uh, there is most of the features are there. The distances are short enough that why can't Wi-Fi could cover. Uh, so that's why I feel it is, it is that. Now, it is possible that when a guest comes, he may not use the the guest network of Wi-Fi and ends up using the three uh, the the five G, and and that can happen. But campus, like educational campus, I do see that uh, Wi-Fi being used. Now, when it comes to industrial, and you pointed to mining and other things, again, I don't see much uh, a difference there as well. Uh, uh, it is it's it's going to remain uh, Wi-Fi, but. Uh, if there are isolated uh, islands of industries, let's say um, sensors in a remote area and not many people manning them and, and it has to go to long distance and those in those cases 5G would be a better solution. Uh, also like industries and, and uh, um, uh, can use a very uh, locally licensed uh, spectrum and, and can use uh, uh, 5G. Um, and lastly, I would say latency would, uh, uh, the need for latency, a uh, low latency, extreme low latency, and, and industries you are going to use automation control. Uh, those kind of places, uh, 5G would come because Wi-Fi has not served that need. Uh, you, you don't feel reliable doing automation control on a high reliability system using 5G, uh, Wi-Fi. And, uh, and, and that's where uh, um, this uh, 5G will be used, but it also will require a lot of infrastructural changes. When you are doing some millisecond uh, latency, and when you're talking of that kind of latency, you also have to bring the number of hops, hops down to a fewer hops and bring the computation more, more towards edge computing. So lot of, it, will, it will usher a lot of infrastructural changes as well, not only the networking, but the computational things will move closer to where the, uh, where the action is. Uh, I'll, I'll pick you up on that latency issue because actually I suspect in a lot of cases the 5G latency is going to take a few years to get anywhere near to this mythical one millisecond. Before I want to dive into that, we've got the poll results. So if I can ask the organisers to push the, the poll results to us so we can, we can have a, a look at what people have said. 
Okay, that's interesting. And um, I, I know this aligns roughly with, I think, what you had in the, the uh, session one for the Americas last night. Um, mm -hmm. Reliability coming out and then TCO and um, capacity. Interestingly, la latency is almost not an issue uh, in this sort of priority list. So it's like very few, few respondents. Is, mm -hmm. is, is that aligned with what you expect? You know, first, it's ex pretty much very same uh, to what we saw in the morning's poll today. Uh, in in when we did it in North America, this this uh, is exactly similar, and it I I can totally relate with it, and I would probably uh, uh, put my vote in a similar way. Uh, uh, why reliability is important, and, and uh, you know now people are uh, working remote, and and you know we are I am at home, we are doing this uh, event, and this reliability is important. Uh, sure. Uh, extremely important. So that remains to be, uh, remains a most uh, important aspect. Uh, networking is, um, you know, blood, and it has to be reliable. Cost is important, very very important. And uh, but there is ever increasing need of speed that's happening. And people who are working at home now with the three, four, five videos running at the same time, it's becoming more important. Um, so, so uh, I totally relate. Regarding latency, I think the reason people are not feeling it and you don't see it because most of the needs, the latency, uh, the needs are served for most cases, for 90% of it. Yeah. Unique, even, even uh, for voice, even for video, the needs are fine. I think those are been totally. absorbed it well. I, it's I, I, very, I mean, very I, specific I, case. I mean, I, when I've looked at this, there's 12 orders of magnitude of latency depend that could matter. So if yeah. you're doing laser pulses for etching a surface, you might be talking femtoseconds or picoseconds. Yeah, and right. at the other end of the scale, it could be months or weeks if I want to send an engineer out to check that the elevator doors are, are not slower this week than last week. And I yeah, think we always yeah. get focused on this sort of two orders of magnitude mm -hmm. in the middle of 1 to 10 and 10 to 100 milliseconds. Yeah. But, you know, the 5G, bit, 5G, yeah. uh, Dean, so the 5G latency, low latency is more geared towards, you know, automatic, uh, uh, you know, uh, yeah. automatically driven cars and then, then uh, you know, operations being done remotely and all those kinds of things. Uh, I think I think we'll have a different uh, debate there. I, I don't believe 5G is necessarily for <laughs> autonomous vehicles. And I think there's a there's a bunch of, of issues where here it's actually it's reliable latency rather than low latency. Okay. And, and yeah, I think absolutely. I agree. It's, it's things like time sensitive networking, which might at the moment isn't in Wi Fi, but might be in future. But uh, yeah. um, okay, that's um, one, one other thing that you didn't mention was that 5G networks need some sort of core network function. Um, mm -hmm. Is that, is that, how does that play into sort of your view of the world? Is this the, the sort of software heaviness of, of 5G? Yeah. So 3GPP has core, right? 5G has core. But you know, what is the function of core? The function of core is authentication, uh, mobility, or roaming, whatever you call it. There is a core in Wi-Fi too. Um, Wi-Fi, you know, in the controller or in the, there is a core as well. So it's not that core is not there. Now, when it's when a when a carrier, a CSP, is is putting a network, countrywide network, the core becomes a lot more uh, complex because it's serving a very very big uh, user base and. Uh, the and, and the layer different type of services, different type of layering. Uh, so it, it becomes more complex. Now, it doesn't mean that when you are going for uh, a private network or a smaller network, you have to keep same complexity. Uh, just even in Cambium, when we used LTE based or fixed wireless broadband, we reduced the core to very small size, right? Um, fitting right at the, at the access point. So, so that will happen as as 5G gets into more private networks, the core sizes will reduce and will become closer to Wi-Fi. It will become easier over time. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because I, I I speak to lots of people and they'll talk about slice selection functions and user play function and <laughs> you know, control and user play and separation. So I feel like I've got a whole sort of 5G part of my client base who's, who's yes. really hot on the core side. And the Wi-Fi industry, I, I, I'm, I'm people from that side, and so I think we'll we'll find light cores for things like fixed yes. wireless, and I, mm -hmm. and I think that that, that will make a, an interesting, um, you know, not it's not like the full heavyweight core that some people are talking about. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, which uh, enterprise? Which uh, enterprises? Uh, what, what verticals are you seeing most interest for um, on the on the on the enterprise side of fire around? If I decide, yeah. So it's I think uh, uh, the first movers of five uh, G is uh, you know fixed wireless broadband will be the first user. We are seeing that's happening, right? Uh, but uh, as far as private network kind of needs are concerned, I think uh, industries, uh, uh, healthcare uh, will move towards five uh, G. You know more uh, because. Uh, more uh, reliability is needed, more uh, uh, automation, you know, those kind of things, sensor type of devices, uh, smart grids will use to five, go to 5G very quickly. Mm. Those are the kind of industries which will be the first mover. I mean, I think it's also going to vary by country because a lot of it's driven by what spectrum is available. So like Germany is very heavy, heavily driven by manufacturing. You know, UK and Japan and Nordics all have very different things. You know, oil industry and, and, and offshore wind is something I'm seeing cropping up. So I think I think we'll see a real interesting patchwork. Yes. And I think it'll take two or three years to, to coalesce. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway. Right. Okay. Well, um, thank you very much for that, Vibhu. Um, and um, we've uh, we've now going to take a short break. Um, and uh, um, when we come back at uh, quarter past uh, for the next session, we, um, on uh, with Scott Imhoff, which is who's, we're going to be talking about uh, six gigahertz and what that means. Um, and in the interim, uh, please enjoy this short video uh, on wireless education solutions. Thank you very much, Reba. Thank you.